Hey gang, it's Mr. Griggs here with another Regions Review video for the Global History and Geography Regions exam. Today's topic will be the French Revolution and we will focus in on the causes of the French Revolution. It's a really important topic, so let's listen up. All right, so causes. I like to start with the different themes that relate to the French Revolution and, uh, you know, Essentially, when we talk about themes, we're talking about thematic essay topics. Now, I'm going to do another video later on the thematic essay and how to write them and how to use these themes in relation to different topics. Um, but for now, let's just be aware that the themes that apply to the French Revolution are change, nationalism, power, political systems, conflict, economic systems, culture and intellectual life, and human rights. Again, we'll come back to these, but keep them in your back pocket uh, and think about them as we move forward with this topic. Now, the essential question that we will revisit at the end uh, of this topic will be, in what way did the French Revolution overturn the balance of power that had existed in Europe? Again, think about who was in power before the revolution and how it all changed after. And that'll be something we will uh, talk about once we get uh, you know through everything here. So let's take a look at the list of causes. I'm going to go through these quick and then talk about them one by one. First, we have the absolute monarchy in France at the time. We have social inequality throughout society. We have economic injustice and some of the economic problems that existed in France during the 1700s. We have the thoughts of the Enlightenment. We have the different viewpoints of the different thinkers during the Enlightenment, which influenced the French Revolution. And then finally, we have actual revolutions. We have the English and American revolutions. We're going to talk about how these revolutions laid a foundation for the French revolutionaries. All right, so let's get into absolute monarchy. As you recall, the uh, French Revolution overthrew an absolute monarch. And that absolute monarch was King Louis XVI. And he's a member of the Bourbon family, which had been in control of France for centuries and, um, you know, was one of the most famous royal families in Europe during this time period. Now, you may remember that his wife was Marie Antoinette. Uh, we'll get into Marie Antoinette in our next video, uh, but she was certainly infamous during this time period and most likely somebody that you remember from class. Now, as you recall, Absolute monarchs had absolute or total control over their nations, which means the people really lose out. The people had absolutely no say in the government. There was no democracy. There was no voting. There was no republicanism or representation in government. Um, and this had a tremendous impact on the people. They were also denied their basic human rights. And we'll talk about that more uh, when it comes to the social inequality and also the economic injustice which led to the French Revolution. Here we are, social inequality. Now, France was split up into three different estates or groups, and they were the following. Number one is the clergy. The clergy made up the first estate, and this was roughly 0.5 to about 1% of the French population, and it made up church officials. Uh, it was made up of church officials, uh, you know, people who worked in the church, and, um, you know, anyone related to that. So, you know, not a lot of people, but still an influential group of people. Next, we have the nobility made up about 1% of the population. These are people with titles. So your dukes, your counts, your barons, right? Um, an old school, um, you know, group, which had a tremendous amount of political control and influence in France during this time period. Um, that leads us to the third estate, the commoners. And that was about 98% oh, of the population, which is an overwhelming majority of the people. So this is going to include your peasants. This is going to include your bourgeoisie, your urban middle class, you know, people from the borough, from the city. Um, you know, so your teachers, your lawyers, your doctors, your shopkeepers, really anybody uh, who, you know, made a decent living in the cities. And then, of course, your poor city workers, 
you know, as you recall, that this time period also happens to be uh, during the early Industrial Revolution period. So you do have people working in factories on a relatively small scale during the uh, French Revolution period in France, but but still, it's a uh, important group of people. Uh, essentially, guys, everyone not in the first and second estate. That's who made up the third estate. Okay. Now, the third estate is going to virtually pay all of the taxes in France, leaving the first and second estate to have massive tax cuts, which means they're not going to pay any taxes. So, if you're in the first and second estate, life's pretty good. If you're in the third estate, um, you're paying a lot of taxes and uh, generally life isn't as good as it is for the people in the first and second. All right. So this is going to cause some problems. As you can see in this political cartoon, the first and the second estate are riding on the back, quite literally and figuratively, on the third estate. So um, I think this political cartoon does a really good job. It's very on the nose. It lets you know exactly um, you know, what the point of view of the, of the illustrator is. Now, here is a nice little breakdown of population, land ownership, and taxation amongst the three estates. As you can see, 98% of the population is made up of the third estate, and they make, a, or they own about 65% of the land, but they pay 100% of the taxes. So this is, again, going to be a major problem. Generally, guys, the first and second estate have more money, all right? Um, and they aren't being taxed. So again, a lot of people in the third estate are going to see this as unfair, and I think you might agree. Now, the economic injustice is going to lead to some major economic problems. Again, the French government is going to spend way more money than they have. And they do this in a number of ways. You know, they spend a lot of money at Versailles, on lavish parties and court spending and just, you know, superficial stuff. Uh, they will also spend a ton of money on expensive wars. Again, wars are really expensive and you need to borrow a lot of money generally during uh, wartime in order to pay for things like, you know, ammo and soldiers and uniforms and so on and so forth. And you'll see a series of wars from the time of Louis the 14th all the way through the 15th to Louis the 16th. And you can just see the national debt um, of France just skyrocket during that time period. Again, this is gonna cause a major economic crisis in France. Also heavy national debt. So on top of all of this debt, we also have really bad weather in the late uh, 1780s, which is going to lead to a poor harvest, and this is going to lead to an increase in food prices. And when you have a, po a population in France, a large percentage of the population in France, uh, you know, taxed heavily, uh, and they're not really making a lot of money, when food prices go up, they can't afford to eat. And that's a major problem. Uh, and it's going to lead to some uh, really important changes that we'll talk about in the next uh, video. So uh, when you don't have enough to eat, you get hungry, you get hangry, and then um, you know, you're know you going to want to see some changes. So we'll talk about that later. All right, next we have the Enlightenment. Again, many Enlightenment thinkers were from France. Uh, you have Montesquieu, Voltaire, Diderot, some some you know really important thinkers during this time period that have these really radical ideas that are going to question traditional authority. Again, absolute monarchy and the Roman Catholic Church. All of a sudden you have a lot of people in France reading these ideas and agreeing with these ideas and it'll certainly influence um, the time period that will um, you know that'll come here. And last but certainly not least, uh, is the English and American revolutions. These revolutions give France a example and a blueprint for how to resist authority successfully. All right. Um, if you recall, France also supported America during the American Revolution, and this put them in uh, even deeper debt. So that's going to, again, play a major role 
in the French Revolution, uh, and it's going to certainly be an important thing for you to remember moving forward. All right, so that's what I have here for you. Uh, those are the major causes. Again, I'm not, not going to satisfy every historian when it comes to the causes. I'm, I'm sure they would focus on something else. But uh, in terms of the regents exam and what the regents uh, wants you to know, you know, those are the uh, main points. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, expect to see the stages of the French Revolution review uh, in the next couple of days. Um, and in the meantime, stay healthy and stay safe. And uh, we'll 